guys, it's Lola from CORE. Today we're going to do a video looking at some rehabable biceps tendinopathy. So these exercises are going to be looking to uh, start loading up that biceps tendon and we're also going to include some work on the rotator cuff muscles as well. So the first exercise you want to have a light resistance band, so these stereo bands are really good for that. I've just tied it on here. Um, obviously not everyone has a bowl attached to the wall at home, so you can use a door handle. Oh. <laughs> not this door handle, a door handle that doesn't move. Um, make sure it's something sturdy, please. <clears throat> anyway, so the first exercise we're going to do is called front sprinter. So we're going to stand in front of uh, the band and we're going to stand slightly further away from it because we're going to be bringing it up in front of us. If we stand too close, it's just going to be doing all of this and that's just not fun for anyone. Okay, so I've got a good grip on the band, I'm going to take a split stance and I'm going to bring my arm up and back down as if I'm sprinting, so in this with the other arm. It's a bit over-exaggerated, but it would be that kind of movement. And back down. Now, if it's slightly earlier in your rehab, and that upward phase is a bit too much for you, you're going to facilitate that with the other hand, and just work on the eccentric movement, because we're stronger in the lowering phase, or the lengthening phase. Coming down, nice and controlled. Okay, so the next exercise we're going to be looking um, at is a kind of similar one, but it's just from the side. So this one is working the rotator cuff muscles and we're looking at external rotation. For the sake of um, the video, um, where you need to see what's going on, I'm gonna do this in the other arm, otherwise I'll be facing away from you. That's no fun. Um, so, Obviously, you need to work the actual arm a little bit better. So it's the same exercise, but this time the resistance is coming from the side. So again, you're going to push up and come back down. Up and come back down. And same on this side, if your muscles are not quite ready for that concentric phase, you're going to facilitate up and pull back down. Up and pull back down. So on all of these, something to note is just to make sure that your shoulders are not coming forward as you're doing that. So keep your shoulder blades actually set back in that position and it's just movement at the shoulder that's occurring as opposed to coming out and moving up and down. So the last tendon loading exercise we're going to do before a couple of stretches is a door frame body weight row. If you do happen to have a pole at home, you can use one of these. Um, so all you're doing is setting yourself up in a sort of row position and you'll be pulling yourself up towards the door. Like this. That's it. Again, keep that scapula set. So um, if I was to show you with this arm, we wouldn't want a sort of the scapula going round. We just want to keep it back so that movement's happening there as opposed to that. If, uh, if it's too advanced for you to be doing the uh, concentric movement here, you're going to lower down, you're going to step back, step forward and start back up at the top. Or some variation of that. Okay, so a couple of stretches that's gonna help as well. So we're gonna be doing one coming into internal rotation. So if, if this is my affected arm, I'm gonna be bringing that underneath and the top arm is coming over to make an archer stretch up here. So in this stretch, we are not focusing on this top arm, that's a different stretch. We're focusing on this bottom arm down here. So. In this position, we're pulling that shoulder into internal rotation. If that's if you can't quite get your hands together there, you can use a towel um, or a very sturdy resistance band. These, I mean, these are not the best to use because they move, so a towel is better. But um, in that case, you can hold on like that and just inch your hands closer and closer. And you can also pull it up to bring that hand, 
bring that bottom arm into more internal rotation. The last one, the last stretch we're going to do um, is we're going to be doing the pec stretch up here and coming into a bit of external rotation. So stand on the side of the door, slightly face away from the arm and just step that close leg through and you're going to bring your hip forward. So there might not be too much movement here and you've got to find the right sort of height for you. It's going to be different for everyone. For me, my sweet spot's about here. And I'm just really trying to push through there. So if you want to increase either of these stretches, I'll show you the example on this one. You can do a bit of PNF. So once you stretch for say 30 seconds, you use this arm to push into the wall. So push, 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 keep pushing, keep pushing for about five seconds and then ease off, stretch a bit more. You can hold that stretch for another 10, 20 seconds. And then you can cycle through that push and stretch maybe two or three times in total. Um, hi guys, sorry, the video just cut out there. Um, anyway, so just to end the video, um, just to note, make sure when you're rehabbing, you're getting plenty of sleep, eating well, drinking lots of water, um, and ice is gonna be your best friend. So ice that bad boy every night, and that should help, especially after exercise. So if it gets a bit painful or a bit flared up, ice is going to just really help you there. Um, I'm probably not expecting you to actually do it every single night, but it's there and it will help you. Anyway, um, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you in the next one.